Hi. Now in this tutorial, the third in my series, I'm going to show you how to solve inequalities where you've got one function of x on one side of the inequality and on the other side you've got a function of x but it's in one mod sign. So how do we do this? We well, can do this kind of solution either graphically or by calculation. And by calculation we can only square both sides if we know that both sides are positive and we can't say that for all values of x here. We know that this side being a mod is always going to be positive so we need to look at this side first. We need to say that x plus 6 must be a positive quantity purely because this is a positive quantity. And if we take 6 from both sides, that obviously leaves us with x must be greater than minus 6. So that restricts, first of all, the range of values that x could be. Now, if x is more than minus 6, we know that this will be positive, And we know that this is definitely positive for all values of x because uh, we got the mod sign. But we can now square both sides. So if we square both sides, we've got x plus 6 all squared is greater than the 3x plus 2 all squared. And if we square this out in the usual way, we're going to get x squared plus 12x plus 36. And that's going to be greater than 9x squared plus 12x plus 4. And we can rearrange this by taking x squared, 12x and 36 from this side. And that's going to leave us with 0 is greater than 8x squared. The 12x is come to 0 when you take them away. And you've got 4 minus 36, which is minus 32. And we can divide throughout by 8 here. So we might as well take that opportunity. And we get 0 is greater than x squared minus 4. And for this quadratic inequality, I think it would be good just to turn this around. 0 is greater than x squared minus 4, so therefore x squared minus 4 must be less than 0. Now I want to factorise this so that I could find out the critical values, and that would be x minus 2x plus 2 if I factorise it, which is less than 0. And so the critical values would be where this equals 0 and it would be when x is 2 or minus 2. So therefore the critical values, CVs, okay, are going to be x equals 2 and x equals minus 2. Now to find out the region that we need for this to be less than 0, what we could do is a sketch graph. OK, we'll just put our graph here, x and y. And then we're going to sketch the graph of y equals x squared minus 4, or the equivalent thing, x minus 2 times x plus 2. I'm going to just leave it as y equals x squared minus 4. And we know that these critical values are the points where it crosses the x-axis. So that would be at minus 2 and 2. We've got a U-shaped parabola, so we're going to have something coming down through the minus 2, something like that, and back up through the 2. Now we're looking for the values of y, that's x squared minus 4, that are less than 0. And that's clearly the values between minus and 2 and 2, the points below the x-axis. So we want this stretch in here. So for this to hold, we can see that, and if we just put it on a number line, say, we need to have x between minus 2 and 2. We want this section here. But we already know that x has got to be more than minus 6. So if we had another number line with minus 6 there, we're allowed to have values more than minus 6. But if both results have got to hold, then it's no good having, say, a number like minus 4, for instance, which might be greater than minus 6. It certainly doesn't fall into this region. 
So for both results to hold, it means that x must lie between minus 2 and 2. So therefore, our solution to this modulus inequality is that x lies between minus 2 and 2. OK, now I did say that we could do this graphically as another option. So if we were doing it graphically, I'd want to draw my axes. So I'd have something like this, x and y. We would draw the graph of y equals the mod of 3x plus 2, which is going to be based around the line y equals 3x plus 2, which would be a fairly steep line going through the 2, say, down here. That's our 2. And then it would, instead of coming down here, it would bounce off the x axis. And so this would be our graph y equals the mod of 3x plus 2. And for the graph of y equals x plus 6, well, it will cut the y axis at 6. Let's just assume that's 6 there. I know it's not drawn to scale. Slightly less gradient than this one, so it'll be a line coming through here, something like this. Okay, let's just mark that on as y equals x plus 6. Where this line crosses the x axis is when y is naught, and that would be at minus 6. Now, the points of significance to us are these two points where the graphs cross. Let's call them. A and B. Let's just put the B up there. And so we're looking to find out what these values of X are. That one and that one down there. And to get this one at A, let's just come over here at A. We need to work out simultaneously where the two graphs cross. This one and this line down here. Well, we know that this line is x plus 6, and it's got to equal the equation for this branch down here, which will be the negative of the 3x plus 2, minus all of 3x plus 2. That will be minus 3x minus 2. And if we add 3x to both sides, we're going to get 3x and x is 4x. And if we subtract 6 from both sides, we end up with equaling minus 2 minus 6, which is minus 8. Divide both sides by 4, and you get x equals minus 2. Now for this point here, b, we'll put minus 2 in here, by the way. For this point b, what we need to do now is just solve simultaneously x plus 6, equaling this positive branch of y equals mod of 3x plus 2. So it will be 3x plus 2. And if we take x from both sides and take 2 from both sides, we end up with 4 equals 2x. And if we divide both sides by 2, then we end up with x equaling 2. So this value here is 2. OK? Now, if we're looking for x plus 6 to be more than the mod of 3x plus 2, we're looking for the blue graph to be above, because we got more than, the red graph. Now the blue graph is above the red graph. Can you see in this section here? The red graph is below it. So that means that we're interested in the values of x from minus 2 to 2. So that agrees with our version down here. All right? So you've either got then the calculation way or the graphical way. You just take your pick. See what you feel happier with. OK, well that brings us now to the end of this tutorial and I hope that's given you an idea then how you can solve modulus inequalities, whatever the type.